There we go. Welcome everybody to In-House Con, our live virtual event sponsored by Cool Waters Productions. I'm your host today, Derek Mackey, and I thank you all for being here today. This is our sixth event that we've had. We had one every Saturday in May, and now we are going to have one every Saturday in June, and we hope that you will join us. On June 13th, we're going to be having Aliens, and that's the movie, not the men from outer space. On June 20th, we're going to be having some Disney guests. On June 27th, we will be having our third Star Wars event featuring some actors all behind the masks. So we hope that you guys will join us for that. Today, of course, is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I am thrilled that we have a lot of uh, cool guests joining us today. Very excited. And I thank all of you for joining in. So who am I and what do we do? Uh, again, I'm Derek Mackey. I'm the president of Cool Waters Productions. We are an appearance management company out in Hollywood, and we specialize in bringing celebrated personalities to fan conventions all around the world. And hence, that is part of the reason why we have our in-house con event virtual event now because we are unable to go to conventions to meet you all. So we're doing it via here on Zoom. So thanks for joining us. And my special shout outs today, I wanna to make sure that we thank Talking Bay 94, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Forever, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan page, and the numerous Facebook groups that helped promote our event today. Thank you very much. I also wanna say special thanks to Richard Usher, who was one of our guests today. He did a big push and gave away some tickets to, uh, last night in a little contest that he did online. So I thank all of those fans for joining us as well. And I hope that you'll enjoy everything today. I want to warn everybody, or not warn everybody, I want to let everyone know, if you are watching Zoom on your iPad or laptop or computer desktop, it is better for you to watch the event using the gallery mode rather than the individual mode on Zoom. When you use the individual mode, Zoom focuses in, focuses in on whomever is talking, which means your screen will switch according to the way Zoom wants to do it. And sometimes weird sounds in someone else's background will revert Zoom to focusing on their video and you might miss out on something. So we recommend you use gallery view if you're using those devices. If you're using a smartphone, like an iPhone or an Android, unfortunately, I think you can only view us in one mode and we will do our best to keep the other background noises at a minimum. So without further ado, I would like to bring on our first, no, wait, I can to play a little bit of the video first before we bring on our first guest. So let me share my screen. And we are going to show you just a little clip from his music video. Hold on one second. And here we go. They didn't say we'd be there in half an hour. Because they displayed. <laughs> Find the strength to do what's right. That's true. 
Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first guest, Richard Usher, Partners in Crime. Hey. Richard, welcome to the show. What's up? What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome, welcome. So nice to see everybody online doing their thing. What's up, guys? How you doing, Richard? Doing well, man. Doing well. Uh, Where are you calling in from today? I'm calling in from Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. And so despite uh, everything going on in the world today between COVID-19 and everybody trying to stay safe and the, just the uh, disruption in the world and all the things going on, we are maintaining here. We are holding our own. Good to see you, Derek. Um, I'm a first responder. As you guys know, I serve as a chaplain. I help the, uh, the homeless out in the streets. We do a lot of... Uh, positive work. We try to keep the peace at this time, man. So it's a real, it's a real difficult time, but we're happy to have such a happy show to talk about today. Well, fantastic. Thank you for your service, Richard. That is excellent. Thank and thank you for joining us today. So we're going to show a couple of more videos here, Richard. My tech guy is going to make your audio and video disappear. And I'm going to let the fans know now we've got two little trailers to show you from the original film. One is the original theatrical trailer and one is a, re a redone one. And after we view those two trailers, we will bring on our other guests. So let me share my screen again and you all enjoy. We'll be right back here. Here we go. <laughs> The city itself will be our playground to use as we please, rewarding ourselves and punishing our enemies. We've been looking for you, Miss O'Neill. There is a new enemy, Prince of Nature. Together, we will punish these creatures. What the heck was that? Looked like sort of a big title in a trench coat. Master Shredder. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to, oh, there I am. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching those little videos. I would like to welcome our first guest, Michelin Sisti. Michelin, welcome to the show. Oh, hello, Derek. Hello, Derek. Hey. Hello, everybody else in California. Sounds, sounds great. Sounds great. 
Oh, we're getting some overlap from, I think, our next guest in the background, Leif Tilden. Let's bring on Leif. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll text <laughs> you if I have a question. Tyler, bring on, bring on Leif. Maybe. Who knows? Oh, Leif has to click. <laughs> there we go. Leif Tilden, everybody. Leif, welcome to the show. Sorry, I was, uh, I was talking with Bill Beretta. All right. Um, hi. <laughs> so, Mish and Leaf, where are you guys calling in from? Mish? I am in Glendale, California. And I'm in Los Feliz, California. Los Feliz, perfect. And let's bring in our last guest, Nick Palma. Nick, come on live. Maybe. Takes a second, guys. Hang with us. First aid, good, good promotion there, Leaf. Get those first responders their, their, uh, their praise. We're waiting for Nick Palma to come on live. I had a Coca-Cola can, but uh... oh, well, we don't want to do any promotion for another company. There we yeah. go. Hey, Nick, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. How you doing? Great to be here. Thank you for being here. And I'm We're outside, by the way, and I, I'm outside. And unfortunately, somebody just started, you know, to use their. They're cleaning the outside, so if it gets too loud, I'll mute myself. No problem. Where are you calling in from, Nick? I'm actually from Los Angeles in the Valley, San Fernando Valley, Reseda area. So good to be here. Well, welcome to the show. We're going to bring Richard Usher back on now so that all four of our guests are now live so that all the fans out there can see them together. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to take questions from the audience so this is a little bit of an instruction for the audience. Oh, you guys can all say hi to Richard. Hi, hi Richard. Hi Richard. Richard. What's up? What's up, gang? I'm here. I'm here. I got some pizza in the house. There's pizza in the house. That's right. That's right. Everybody, break out your pizza. Go ahead. All right. So just a little bit of instructions for the fans that are watching. So fans, we have two areas that you guys can chat in. One is the chat room, which is located in the bottom center of your screen. The chat room is only for the fans. The celebrities don't interact in that room. The celebrities are all interacting live here on camera. If you want to ask one of the celebrities a question, you need to go over to the bottom right hand side of your screen on Zoom. There is a Q&A button. The Q&A button is where you will enter your question. I will ask the question live on air and it will be responded to live on air by all or one of our guests. So that's how it works here. It's very simple to do. And I'm going to get the ball rolling with the questions, guys, as I do every week. And I think the first question I'm going to do, we're going to do for Nick, Mish, and Leaf. And I would like to know how you guys got your role in the film. Leaf, why don't we start with you? Well, I was living in Death Valley at the time, and, uh, and, it, and it's very, very hot there. It's like 120 degrees year round. And, uh, and they're looking for somebody that can withstand high temperature. And, um, and so uh, they called me in, and uh, uh, where I auditioned, they, they created this sort of oven. And it was like, it went up to like 130 degrees. It was like it's contained, it was like, a, it was like a science experiment. It was like, there's always like lab technicians and doctors. Um, and uh, and I, I, I was like, they put me in this, this weird suit and I was like sweating and, and, and like a doctor there. And, 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 uh, and I made it, I made it like 30 minutes. I had to withstand the temperature and I, and I survived. And they said, you got the job. And I was like, well, right. Cool. And I moved from Death Valley to Los Angeles. Wow. Okay. Thank you for sharing, Leaf. Yeah. Mish, Mish, was your <laughs> audition that treacherous? Uh, no, no. Actually, I, I won a raffle. <laughs> okay. Uh, fantastic. Good. Good. And Nick, Nick's left the room. Now. He doesn't even want to answer. Nick, when you come back, you could answer the question. <laughs> That's the best answer ever. <laughs> Nick, how did you get the role in the film? <laughs> well, actually, how I got—I was—I was—I was, I was, I had just moved from Los, San Francisco to Los Angeles. All right, and I uh, happened to be at Black Belt Magazine uh, with another prominent martial artist at the time, and he told them that I wanted to be in movies, stuff like that. I had my photo, my resume together. They said, "Well, you know what? They're looking for this last turtle in this movie," uh, and and it's the truth. And I just happened to be right size right height and um, right place. 
And uh, by the end of that week, I was on a flight to uh, to London getting being fitted for the. That's not what I heard. <laughs> well, that's the that's what it is. I'm sticking no, no, by. No, no, man, you you were dating Bruce Lee's daughter. Okay, oh, tell the story. Yeah, you really come on. Yeah, I wish I. She's actually uh, ten Lived times taller than I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Thank you for. It thank just you. all happened within a week. Nick Palma, by the way, plays a mean saxophone. I just want to let everybody know that. Oh, maybe he can grace some music later. I mean, you taught me, so. So, Richard, Richard, Richard super Paul. handsome. You look great, man. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much, all you guys. Looking good. Richard, <laughs> you know, Richard's a first responder, everybody. Just want to let you guys know that. Yes. 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 New York, yeah, for New York State. And, uh, yeah, that's great. You know, thank you, Richard. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, glad to be a, a, a be able to be to serve and have, do service. And uh, it's a tumultuous time in the world right now, uh, as you all know when you watch the news. Um, and what I wanted to say, I wanted to say something special just about that for one minute. My thoughts on, especially sometimes with the the civil unrest that's going on, and you guys that know me uh, as partners in crime and the music that we've done. When you talk about heroes and you talk about justice, it's not about skin color. It's about what's right. It's about doing what's right in the world and standing up for people that, that can't stand up for themselves. And it, I'm so proud to see so many people that are doing that. And especially in the spirit of the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man, there's so many people that are just making a stand for, for people that uh, need justice and the people that need a voice. And I'm so proud of all the fans and everyone. I just wanted to say that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Richard. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Absolutely. Richard. Absolutely. So, Richard, uh, now and since you have the floor, I would like to know what tall tale you have to tell us how you got involved in the Ninja Turtle world, if you can. Please. Wow. Well, before we start and before I forget, I want you all to see the exclusive Ninja Turtle shirt I have on. 30th ah. anniversary shirt. Signed by Elias Coteus and Judith, April, and Casey. So I'm showing up fresh to the show. <laughs> I just want you to know. We're coming for the fans right there. Um, it's been a blessing. It's been wonderful. Um, let me say, so how we got our start, which was so interesting, is we had been putting demos together, uh, myself and Keymaster Snow, from, uh, from my days in college at Syracuse University. He was a DJ. And I was already an MC coming out of the Bronx, right out of where the roots of uh, rap started. And um, I was coming up as a small teenager, a young teenager, where the older teenagers were the original um, old school hip hop pioneers. You're talking about Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. You're talking about the Cold Crush Brothers, the Funky Four Plus One More. I grew up in that same area of the Bronx, watching them as a young teen, watching these older teens do something phenomenal and live. And then myself and a couple of my uh, high school buddies, we formed our own group in high school and made some records back then with some of the, the rap pioneers. So we're actually in, in the Ego Trip book of rap lists as, as some of the high school, uh, I should say, as the rap pioneers. And we're under the rap group uh, chapter three. So we've been doing rap for a while. I'm actually come from an authentic, you know, some people think that, um, oh, this guy just got his start and made this cute record um, for the turtles or something. And actually, no, it started a long time ago with uh, the roots of rap as we know it. But how I got my actual start close to how we got to the Ninja Turtles is we were doing demos and doing a lot of things that the music was good and people were feeling it and talking to us from a lot of different areas and saying, yeah, we like this stuff. It's pretty good. We're shopping demos. We were not, uh, we got people that liked it, but we never got the big yes. Um, that didn't happen for quite a while. That's why I tell everybody who's watching, whatever your passion is, whatever you're working on, whatever your dream is, just keep working at it. If you believe it, and you believe in it, when that opportunity comes, you'll be ahead of anybody who's just starting. So we had our demo shopping and someone got a demo to the SBK EMI Records A&R guys, and they heard it and they loved it. They were like, listen, we love what you guys have. We wanna sign you, but we actually have a project on the table right now it's um, a film about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Have you heard of it? And I was like, I know the cartoon and I know the comic book, but the movie hadn't even come out yet. 
He's like, well, we need a song for it like yesterday. Do you think you guys want to try to write something for it? I got that information on a Friday afternoon. And because we had been so good at doing demos and trying to, we gotten so well at knowing how to put songs together and beats together and write that uh, I say by the grace and blessings of the most high, by Monday morning, we had the song uh, done. And I got information from the A&R guy. He gave me the rundown Friday night of the plot points of the movie. And that's how we got our, our uh, introduction to being able to do it for the movie. They loved it. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's yeah, pretty cool. Thanks, sir. Thank that, you. That, that might be the straightest answer we've gotten today so far. All right. <laughs> so, let me, let me do another question here. This is going to be for Leaf. Leaf, this is from a fan yes. named Scott. Scott, there is a pretty big difference in Donatello's body language between the first movie and the second movie. Was that a conscious choice on your part? And I'm going to do a little screen share here of you behind the scenes while you answer this question. Yeah, so go was, ahead. yeah, that picture, um, I just smoked a J right there, as you can see how happy I am. <laughs> see how I'm looking at the head there? <laughs> you know, oh, leave. Look how stunned I am. <laughs> All right, so, um, <clears throat> oh my God, I was so young, I looked like I was 12. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, um, you know, the first movie, working on the first movie and the second movie was uh, a lot different because the first movie was, you know, it was, it was a learning process um, and there was a, a big unknown, right? Like not only was it my first film, uh, so I, I had no idea like what it was like to actually be in a film, you know, like in all, all the different aspects of that, you know, navigating that, you know. Um, and also it was survival as everyone is, you know, the plethora of stories of, about, you know, that we keep talking about and other people talk about, about how we survived, you know. Um, uh, but we had a lot of time to think about it between the first and second movie, um, at least I did. And so when we started doing the second movie, the process was a little different. Um, the, the, uh, the technology had, it had improved a lot where we could actually move with ease a little better. That affected my performance. And, and also because I've been thinking about it and like, how can I make choices physically and emotionally to uh, make this, this, this costume feel more real. Like I would like add an itch, you know, um, things like that, you know, like adjust the, the straps and, you know, it's th that I actually, it looks like I'm connected to the skin that's laid upon my skin. Right. So there was a lot of exploration in that. Also, uh, and this is not to take away from Steve Barron or anything like that, but Mike, Michael Pressman, the director of the second movie, he was now his first time with this, right? So he would ask a lot of questions to us and the puppeteers and everyone else who was a part of the first movie. He was very curious, curious guy, you know, child, you know, ch child at heart, young at heart. And, um, and, so, and, and so the process from the beginning was this sort of collaborative to help the director understand and explore. And so we were very much a part of how we're gonna do things, which was different from the beginning of the first film where we were trying to learn the technique and the style and um, what were these suits. And by the second movie, it was more like, how can we bring this to life with the knowledge that we have had before? For instance, I know this is a long-winded answer, but anyway. So when we're doing the mall scene, I, I, I don't know if you remember, but uh, Donatello discovers this little punching doll in the toy store, right? That you, one of those punching things, they, they goes back and hits you back and he like impersonates one. Well, how we executed that as I had, you know, Michael said, do you have any feedback on how we can do that? And, and I happen to have seen this Cirque du Soleil performance where 
there was like this bit where this conductor is air conducting this orchestra. And he, he was, had this ability as a conductor to sort of bend down and kiss the ground. This very extreme conductor where he's like so extreme and he would rock back and forth. And I saw this little documentary where uh, behind the scenes where they took a mini tramp and they took a metal plate and replaced it with the, the fabric of the mini tramp. And then they screwed in some ski boots. And so I thought that's perfect. That's like the perfect thing. So I talked to the special effects guys and I gave, so my point is that we had a lot of feedback in terms of the bits where I think that in the first movie, things were a little predetermined, you know, how the stunt was going to happen and uh, how, how, how the choreography was going to be. For instance, in the first movie, um, the opening sequence, we run through the tunnels and then we, we jump up and we're like cowabunga. That was like 36 takes. And we learned a lot from that sequence, you know, like how to do things the hard way. Um, the, the sewer was very wet and we were slipping in our turtle feet. So we replaced the turtle feet with us with sneakers and, and, uh, and the choreography was predetermined. And we realized, you know, from that sequence that we kind of need to be part of the mix in terms of how we do this. Because they visualized something that was very hard for us to execute. Because we could barely see. And um, so there was a lot of, you know, between the first and second movie of things that we learned from the first, how we can hopefully do better on the second. So that's my answer, Scott. That's per that's perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Is that going to be the most realistic thing you tell us all day? <laughs> so, uh, continuing with a question from Mish from Scott. Uh, where did it go? Oh, right here. So, uh, Michelin, can you please talk a little bit about your musical and theater background? Ah, well, geez, I don't know if I could do that. Um, yeah. Uh, before I became a turtle, I had another life as an actor on the stage. I was 20 years in New York City. Uh, I had done five Broadway shows by that time and had lived my dream. That was what I had wanted to do with myself since I was, oh, maybe 12. Yeah, even though I didn't acknowledge it at that time, it wasn't until later that I realized that that's what I wanted to do. But that's what I did. I started out in the theater, uh, but before the theater, I was a musician. I had put myself through college as a musician. Uh, I started out in classical music with woodwinds, um, moved on to, because I wanted to do it, moved on to blues and uh, rock and jazz as a drummer, uh, self-taught, and then, uh, that helped me put myself through college. And while I was doing all that on the side, whenever I could, I would do shows, musicals, reviews, whatever, whatever was available to me. I uh, did some in, in the university itself. And by the time I finished uh, college, I realized that that's really what I enjoyed the most. And by that time I had realized that a career in music wasn't gonna be necessarily the thing, especially as a classical musician. So uh, I decided to become an actor uh, in full force and moved to New York from Buffalo. And uh, the rest is a bit of history. That'd be, uh, I did my dreams there and then suddenly a new dream came on the horizon and it was all green and sweaty. Can I add something to that? Please leave, of course. When Misha arrived on, when I first met Misha, you know, um, immediately in the rehearsal process, because we had like this rehearsal process where we're trying to understand what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> Misha immediately raised the bar in terms of uh, focus. Immediately, because he was like this, you know, seasoned actor from New York who had done theater and Broadway and, um, and immense talent. Immediately, you just tell that like he was an actor, like he embodied, it was, it was, it was in his bloodstream, you know, and um, 
he immediately raised the focus because in the beginning, you know, you, you, you're, you know, for me, I, I was like, what's going on here? What's this, you know, what is this? You know, am I being a stunt guy? Am I, am I, you know, like, what am I doing here? You know, you know, and he, without, he didn't say, say this sentence, but it was, but, but figuratively he's like, we're actors, you know, this is acting. And, uh, and just the way he went about the rehearsal process in terms of, inside out, you know, in terms of finding the character and the playfulness and the seriousness in terms of his focus, in terms of taking this job seriously was immediate. And I just want to say, you know, before I die, thank you, Misha, um, for that. That was, that's incredibly sweet. Misha, you must be so humbled now. No, never. Uh, that's very sweet of you. Thank you. No, thank that's you. That's, that's the truth. Well, I don't like you very much. I don't like you. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I believe. That's very nice of you to say. I, I must admit that I was very, very focused when we started up because you were well, like you. This, my, this you was were working first... out at home. Pardon? The place that you were staying while we were filming. Like I went over to your house a couple of times, just knocked on the door, you know, with like a beer in my hand. And you were like working out. You were like getting in shape. You were like, I'm like, oh my God, we just worked for 10 hours in these fucking costumes. And you're like, I know. <laughs> Gotta keep doing it. Gotta keep yeah. working. Yeah, I, I wasn't necessarily that devoted. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I would like to say something as long as we're in this mode um, that, I have learned an awful lot from you, my friend, not just as a turtle, but as a dinosaur and uh, the many iterations after that. And then uh, 30 years of life and the fact that we're still friends and keep in touch and are concerned for one another, that uh, says a hell of a lot. Why didn't you say that when we were at, in the divorce proceedings? I'm sorry, I was on her side. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Mish, since you brought it up, would you please uh, tell us a little bit about the dinosaur experience? Leaf, you as well. I mean, the two of you, just, I mean, dinosaurs, it was a great show. So fill us it, in. It, it was, and, and it's something that both of us are extremely proud of. Uh, we got to do things in the four, during the four seasons of Dinosaurs that were undreamed about as far as a, a, a children's show certainly, and certainly one that had big rubber dinosaurs running around with animatronic heads. I mean, we were, we were so unique, there wasn't the words to truly describe us. So uh, yeah, I, I think that that was one of the best things I've ever done. It was amazing. And I'll say the same thing about Misha on dinosaurs. So we started, I'm sorry, I just, I love you, man. Like I can't help, you know, I have to, you know. So, um, when we first started Dinosaurs, Misha wasn't Charlene. Misha was brought in as sort of like an all-world utility guy, you know, because he was an actor and he could play all different, you know, he could just, because he can, he could just, he, 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 give him a character, he can do it, right? So they brought him in as sort of to do all, because they're always, every episode is different characters and personalities and they kind of brought him in. And uh, without trying to be overly judgmental, the person that they had is in Charlene uh, was not really. Uh, and I remember, like after, like towards the end of the first, we're filming the end of the first episode. Michael Jacobs, who was like the showrunner for the show, was getting. They were getting a little frustrated how Charlene was kind of coming across. And I remember looking at the we're at Video Village and Michael Jacobs, and and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I was, I, I was gaining respect from him. And he, and he was like, I don't know what to do. What do we do, Leaf? What, what are we gonna do with this? You know, and I was like, Misha, you know, Misha. You know, you want this character to come alive? It's Misha. And he goes, yeah, right? Like Misha is like, ah, yeah, yeah. And then, and it wasn't because of me. That was already, people were already talking about that. But I, I, I toted your, I touted your, what's the expression? I blew your horn. Without <laughs> um, and I uh, should blow it again. Har, har. And then, like the first like five minutes, Misha was like performing Charlene. She just came to life, you know. Everything came together. 
So. Th th thank you. That's very sweet. And that is exactly what happened. I was brought into dinosaurs to be it. I had two suits. I had a male suit, which turned out to be Sid Turtlepuss, and I had a female suit. So I was going to be the utility dinosaur. I was going to do male or female characters in every episode, whatever they needed. And then when the actor who was in the Charlene initially could not physically handle being in the suit, that was the issue. And therefore her performance couldn't come out of the suit. Uh, that's when Brian came to me after they had been discussions, obviously, and said, uh, we'd like you to take over Charlene. So I gave away my female universal di dinosaur and we brought other people in, Star Townsend was one of the people. And then I kept Sid Turtlepuss because I wanted to. <laughs> he got to do so many cool things. And then they um, put me in Charlie. And I know I did it selfishly too, because I'm like, how many seasons are we going to do of this? Like, I need Misha here. You know, like I can't. Yeah, we did have fun. We certainly did have fun. My yeah, goodness. Thank God you were, you know, that we did that together because that would have, you know, anyway. It was fun. We had so much fun playing around. And we played around with the crew. And I think on the oh. second Ninja Turtle movie, we, we you know, because we were sort of adjusted and, and uh, you know, we started being able to get out of our bubble, our survival yeah. bubble, and we started playing with the crew and, and, uh, and a lot of pictures. I think I have a, some crazy pictures of us with... Um, with uh, what were they? They were filming Rambling Rose. Right? Laura Dern. I have this picture of us with Laura Dern somewhere. That's right. I forgot all about that. We were shooting Rambling Rose, uh, directed by Rennie Harlan, who did the original um, Bruce Willis. Uh, what was that movie? Come on. You guys know. I'm sure the fans are just screaming it out right now, you know. But he was like doing cocaine and directing a movie with Bob Duvall and Laura Dern. Uh, Leaf, As you, you need do. To a, you need to write a book. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, I try, I, I, I kind of want to do a documentary, you know, and get everybody together and really do like a really in-depth, because there's, there's some weird documentaries out there. Some guys approached me like last year. And I'm like, why are you guys doing the documentary? You guys know a clue, of what, you know, like you should, the documentary should happen from the inside because from Richard to Nick to everybody that was involved in this, there's so much to talk about in terms of making this film. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I well, agree. Here, you keep looking for that picture. Let's, let's cut over now to, to Nick. Nick, I want to know how many injuries you sustained doing these bizarre stunts on set with that mask on. Uh, well, okay. Well, you know, talk about being in the bubble. Um, First of all, that, you know, that was my first big, big break was the second movie. I had done a, you know, a couple of maybe low budget stuff before that, and then I got that movie. Um, to be honest, also, all the, the other three actors, you know, Stephen Ho, who did Donald Tello uh, stunt, stunts for the, the Turtle, uh, Larry Lamb was Leonardo, and then Hosan Pak was Raphael. These guys were seasoned martial arts, and they were coming right off the Nazca circuit off the north, uh, you know, and so I was kind of the last one picked, the last turtle pick, right time, right place, right height, and so forth, uh, and I got the job. So from, talk about being, uh, yeah, trying to survive, uh, leave. yeah, I definitely was doing that for three months, and uh, if I would have, uh, if ever I drank or took drugs, that would have been the time to do it, but no, I'm not that type, I don't, and I, I haven't, and I never will, but I have my other issues. Anyway, we're not talking about that at the moment. So um, basically, yeah, well, uh, I got injured the first time, you know, small things like, you know, my back, my back here and there, maybe doing the back handsprings. It was tough to do in the suit, and, and it's tough to do a back handspring in itself because it's a blind move anyway. I mean, you can't see where you're going when you throw your, your, your back handspring. But now you got that headgear on and you got the shell on, it makes it that much harder. So I had been practicing it, and I was able to throw it pretty decently. And so I think the first time I had to throw it was actually when, uh, when, I, and, uh, when uh, Splinter uh, told Mikey to go do 10 backflips. Do you remember, uh, Mish, when that, when that happened? 
Um, so anyway, I was throwing this backflip and I'm so I was prepared to throw it. I go up to the spot that they wanted me to do it. Now I find that there's two walls that are considerably a lot closer than where I have been practicing it. So that in itself threw me off mentally as well. But, um, but I threw it and, uh, you know, it took some, I just went for it. Basically I threw it and then I got up and I threw it again. And, and, uh, thank God, I think it didn't take, that was the only take that they needed with that. And I moved on. But it wasn't until I got to the nightclub scene with, uh, with Vanilla Ice that I was fighting the foot soldiers. Uh, one of the foot soldiers grabbed my leg. I did a, a jump and I kicked across his face. But as I landed onto the stage floor, the inside of my knee slammed against the concrete floor. And it, it slammed so hard. And in between the, um, the suit itself, the turtle suits, there was you know your your bones were exposed there were certain areas that were exposed and that just happened to be one of the spots that that I hit and so the next week I'm so I was injured but it but it wasn't it wasn't totally horrendous but the next week uh we were in the in the junkyard scene where they had the cargo net and uh and that cargo net was supposed to take Michelangelo Leonardo and uh and and it was uh Donatello and we were trying to help Raphael that was tied up in the junkyard scene. So we go in, the cargo net swoops us up, and it's supposed to go 20 feet off the ground with a hydraulic lift, just like that. As it goes up off the air, about 10 feet off the floor, the cable snapped, and we were back on that uh, stage floor like that. And you talk about dead silence. It was, it was, it was scary because, I mean, we thought, you know, we, we didn't know what happened. We were, we were definitely injured. Uh, Stephen Ho broke his foot in three places where his ankle swelled up to the point where if they didn't evacuate him, he would have lost his, his foot probably. Um, and Larry Lang compressed his lower back. And then I severed my MCL, which is my medial collateral ligament on that. So that stabilizes your lateral movement when you're moving sideways. So, I mean, that one, uh, we were about two weeks uh, before we finished the movie. I ended up finishing the movie, um, uh, and then I, then it continued to, to, you know, to, to affect me afterwards. And I went to go in and eventually had to get an operation to uh, staple that uh, MCL together. So, yeah, that was a pretty tough one. In fact, you know, there was, there was a, I can't remember the famous actor. He said, pain is temporary, but film is forever. So Nick, thanks for all the pain. <laughs> hey, no problem. And you guys yeah, too, Misha, Misha Lee. You know, same thing. You guys suffered as well for the art form. So, you know, thank you for that. So while I Nick's feel, looking, I, don't, I don't feel pain. Anyway, <laughs> I, I have a, I don't feel pain. Listen, uh, Nick. Yes. Nick, yeah. Yes. What do you eat for breakfast? Uh, this morning I ate, uh, I had, uh, what did I have? I had oatmeal, tofu, blueberries, and uh, some banana. Oh my God! With, with some money, <laughs> they, they I, I know where we're okay. I can see where we're going with this. Nick is a tough guy, so here's what oh, we're yeah. going to do. I, I was going to bring Richard. Hang tight. We've got more questions for you, but because of the segue that Leaf just made, I want to yes. do our first in-house con exclusive, and it's going to be with Nick. And nice. for fans, for fans who have never joined us before, let me just explain. Every week, I ask my clients to prepare something that they've never shared before or that is very unique, especially since they're in their homes, that is exclusive to our event only so that it gives our event a special way to, to thrive in the fan world. So all of our guests have prepared something, but I'm going to have Nick do the first one only because Leaf's question kind of leads to it with him being so physically in shape. Nick sent me, I'm going to have Tyler, my tech guy, make all of us disappear except for Nick so that Nick can talk about what we're about to show. Nick, oh, you shit. sent a couple of videos and oh, I right. want you, which one is the one where you're like, I think it's this one. I'm assuming this was when you shot now, the Enter the Dragon thing, is that very current? Well, yeah, so this is a project that I wrote. It's, it's, it's a small project. It's a small script. It's a 12-page script, so it's a short. I want to film it, and it's uh, and this is some of the fight sequences that I have in mind. Now, keep in mind, I was inspired by Bruce Lee, specifically uh, Enter the Dragon. I was 13 when in 1973 when Enter the Dragon premiered, and I mean, uh, just as a 13-year-old watching Bruce Lee up on the screen, 
made an extreme impression on me. In fact, it, it kind of set my course for life. So the next week I was in a martial arts school. It could have been any type of school. I would have known the difference. It just so happened to be a Chinese Kung Fu school called Choi Le Foot, uh, Southern style Kung Fu. Um, and then, um, and so the short is the template that I'm using is Enter the Dragon for my short. Though the story is different, um, you know, I am gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try to pay homage to Bruce the best I can. And so, all right, cool. Well, let's yeah. take a look at this, and everybody, including Leaf, <laughs> will be able to see what an amazing shape you are in. So let's hit play. Well, I. Yeah, so in Enter the Dragon, at the beginning, there was the temple scene. And Bruce Lee was in the Shaolin Temple, and he fought a young, I don't know if our audience know the other actor he fought with in that scene, but that was Salmo Hung. Salmo Hung was 17 years old at that time, and, um, and Bruce Lee was fighting him. Now, this was shot during the quarantine, so I'm fighting uh, gnats or mosquitoes or whatever, but no, I didn't have my other opponent at the time. But, um, of course, it uh, does look better and sound better with the music, but of course, you know, that's, it's cool. Yeah, well, the music is playing in the background, but we have a hard time sharing music in Zoom, but... Um, oh, okay. And now someone's breaking into someone's car. <laughs> no, it's actually my uh, alarm clock. Oh, okay. But, uh, wow. But yeah, actually, all, all these moves I, was taught to me by Mish, by the way, Leaf and uh, and Derek. No, but I gotta say though, so 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 playing the stunt turtle for Mikey on the second movie was my first big break. And if it wasn't for Mish, uh, he really he he was instrumental in me fin not only finishing that movie but bringing uh, Mikey to life for me because he had known Mikey. He is Mikey. You know, he is Michelangelo. And I do appreciate all that he's done. And actually the whole crew and Leaf and everything, they really oh, um, accepted us with open arms and really got to know us. And, and I appreciate all their assistance because it, it is teamwork. It's definitely a teamwork making a movie. So, but uh, yeah, so that was- uh, together. That, it's incredible. It, Nick, if you don't mind, how old are you? Uh, well, I just turned, uh, I just had a birthday, and so did Michelin, by the way. Uh, of course, Mish can tell you, but I, mine was actually a Monday, June 1st. I'm 60 years old now. Wow. So, well, I mean, there's certain things that I can do, and that keeping in shape is definitely a form of uh, the fountain of youth, but, you know, there's other things that I have, I have to play God in other ways, too. So, especially it snows up here sometimes. I gotta, <laughs> you know, yeah, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. But, but it's okay. It's, it's part of life. I mean, I, you know, I just, so. Well, it was incredible. Well, thank you for yeah. sharing that with us. Yeah. It's amazing how well you take care of yourself. Love so uh, let's, let's do a fan question here for Richard. Richard, Scott wants to know if you, sorry, I can't read without my glasses. Can you talk about your knowledge of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles before you were brought into the movie? Were you originally a fan? Um, I can definitely talk about that. Derek, by the way, you look dapper. I wanted to let you know that. You're looking, you're I'm looking wearing, dapper today. I'm wearing my little turtle tie. I don't know if you can see oh, it. Oh, but... nice. That's fresh. I love that. I love that. <laughs> All the guys are looking good. Glad to, glad to see the whole gang. Um, yes. So what is it again? Was I familiar with the turtles? Were you right? familiar with Ninja Turtles and uh, a fan? In, yeah, from Scott. So the, so the cool thing. Hey, Scott, by the way. What's up, Scott? Uh, that's my man from TMNT Minute. He's a great, great guy and a great fan of the, the Ninja Turtles. Um, I knew about the cartoon. You know, I try to keep uh, abreast of pop culture. Um, I also have a great interest in children's television and children's programming, which, by the way, may be doing something in the future along those lines. Uh, keep checking with my uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Mostly I'm, I'm on Instagram. I will post updates, look for some things along those lines. So I definitely knew about the cartoon and I knew about the comic book. 
Um, I loved the whole idea with the Ninja Turtles was that they weren't uh, adults. I think part of the wonderful appeal of them being teenagers is that, you know, young people everywhere could identify with them um, in, in a special way. You know, Spider-Man has that working for him as well. Those are special things that you see in superheroes when they're a bit younger, which means also they're prone to some different mistakes and they're still very human in a lot of ways. And I think we like relating to that. So I always love that about them. So I knew that uh, when we spoke about the uh, fandom, I was aware of those elements. But again, I mean, I was right at the beginning before the explosion happened. And it was just a blessing and an amazing place to be when it all, all uh, took off, especially with uh, Jim Henson. And I have my little bit of, um, many of you maybe have seen this, this photo. So Jim Henson with the turtles. Um, Loved Jim Henson uh, growing up with Sesame Street. Uh, I actually had an, an opportunity to do a song for Sesame Street. Um, I did a version of uh, This Old Man um, as Partners in Crime. You can find that on YouTube. So yes, there goes the photo. So the amazing, the amazing thing is when the wonderful artists and developers put these um, the, the sketches together and then Jim Henson's uh, animatronics from his, all of his experience, made these guys come to life. And I think the personality that the Ninja Turtles have, we all have friends that have some aspect of every turtle, and we have some aspect of every turtle in all of us, um, whether we are mostly like uh, one or, or a couple of them at different times in our day, that's what's so relatable and so great about them. Even with the guys that you have here in the panel today, uh, Leif Tilden is a, definitely the spirit of a, a comedian, as you hear constantly. Um, but I love the, uh, the, the photos you have here with Jim Henson and Leonardo, and being able to recently meet uh, Jim Henson's son, Brian Henson, in the reunion uh, that we did was a wonderful uh, experience as well. Loved it. I would, like, I would like Leif and Mish to share their personal one-on-ones about Jim and what he was like. Can you guys chime in on that? He was a genius in my opinion. Definitely. Uh, uh, that's an understatement. I mean, um, <laughs> you, you know, it, Jim, I mean, um, instantly, like I didn't even know he was gonna be there. I, I, maybe some other people knew, but like we were rehearsing before we started the movie and then suddenly I'm like in the suit, and we're rehearsing a scene, a scene uh, I think it's when we're waiting for the pizza in the sewer with Misha. And, uh, and we were, it was very subtle work because it was just, you know, from here up, it's just our heads. And how do we move the head with the eyes and try to you know, evoke the emotion. And, and I remember like looking through the little slits under my eyes and going, is that Jim Henson? You know, and my puppeteer, David Rudman was like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's Jim Henson, you know? And I'm like, you just threw that away. Like it's, you know, like, oh yeah, there's the pizza guy. You know what I mean? Like it was Jim Henson, you know? And then we start, I hung out with him a little bit after and you instantly get this aura from him of um, super curious. Like he's engaging in a conversation. He's like, he just, open and curious and um, always asking questions and, you know, a collaborator. As, you know, like he's demands collaboration just in his presence. And he's also like a kick-ass bowler, by the way. Like we went bowling a lot after rehearsals and uh, filming even. And, he, and it, was, it was that year we were filming where bowling alleys, just first installing the ability where where the computer just keeps the score yourself it's so you don't have to write the scores down like you know you get a strike and it just do, it does the whole scoring he couldn't this was like this was like a gift from santa claus to jim henson he couldn't believe that <laughs> oh my god like it keeps your own score like he didn't even want to leave the bowling alley and and there were many times we would leave the bowling alley and he'd be the last person there. Nice. But I, I want to show you some, some pictures, all right? So here's the Ninja Turtles with Laura Dern. 
Nice. Right? I think she felt like she was getting attacked. This was, <laughs> this, this is us resting in between takes and you can see the computer on the back, on the, where the, the shell isn't, that's what the shell covered up, was the technology that moved the servos in our head. And we're like passed out. That was very common. We would just do a scene and we just like collapse. Um, here's one where I was questioning my self and why I was there. Just, that was a common thing. They, they wouldn't take the head off completely. They just kind of move it. They take it off and move it to the side. And it felt like, you know, we, we were like this, you know, handicapped, you know. We're, anyway, and then, um, here, sorry. <laughs> and then uh, there's me, a very common shot, just asleep. Like we we're filming and then I was asleep. Um, uh, here's an interesting picture. We all had these dressers that dressed us and put us in our costumes. And they were like, they had our backs. Without these people, we would have not made it through the entire thing. So this is a picture of all the turtles and our dressers. We did this kind of group shot. And I miss all those guys, by the way. I'm sorry, was there a question? Well, we're, no, well, you were answering it, but Misha also has to, to chime in about Mr. Henson. Yeah, chime in, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, all right, first of all, as far as Jim is concerned, um, my experience with Jim actually didn't hit home until later. Uh, when he came down to the, the, the set, it was like Leaf was describing, it was just crazy down there. So we saw one side of him. And then uh, I had another opportunity later on to have a conversation with him. And what I realized was during that conversation, as soon as I came within maybe five, six feet of, of him, the aura that Leaf refers to is palpable. He was such, he was such a calm and kind spirit that when you were near him and he was talking to you and he was making you the focus of all of his attention, you felt like you were in a big, warm hug. It was a very creative and sometimes intimidating hug when you were trying to do something nice, nice to, to please him, but you never felt like you were left unprotected. You never felt like you were dangling out there with no net. Yeah. He made you feel centered. He made me feel centered. Um, I still miss him to this day. Uh, as far as the, the dressers, he's absolutely right about that. We would not have been, we, we would not be here now in the forms that we are without those people saving our asses. Yeah, they were first responders. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. yeah. So, Mish, since you have the floor, I'm actually going to ask for a another exclusive for our event to start. I'm going to ask Tyler to lose temporarily Nick and Richard and Leaf. So, Mish, we're going to do an in-house con exclusive with you. I believe that you do have an original prop to share with our ah. viewers, and I would love for you to to be able to show it and explain a little bit about it. So ladies and gentlemen, here is a exclusive with Michelin. Okay guys, dudes and dudettes, here they are. These are my hero, my pair of hero nunchucks from both movies, by the way, even though I didn't get to use them on camera in the second movie. You can see the amount of scarring and knocks and dents, some of them on my opponents, some of them from hitting me. <laughs> so there was a definite learning curve with these puppies. And there they are, the original pair. Those are really neat. Are they, what are they made of, Mish? Wood. Wood. They hurt a lot when you got hit with them. <laughs> <laughs> 
we've got fans chiming in going how much for them um but so <laughs> those are really cool thank you for sharing these and i know also this is a good this is something that was unexpected to the fans so let me just do a quick screen share again so we have our exclusive logo up there because we're going to do another quick exclusive with michelin so fans you didn't know we were going to do this this is something that michelin and i prepared on our own and I asked Michelin if there was something he could prepare that we could give away on screen. And Michelin, why don't you show us where, what we're going to give away to a lucky viewer, and then I'll say who won. Okay. Well, what I have, and you can see the, the Jim Henson Creature Shop hat that I am wearing. These were one of a kinds that uh, were only available for a very short period of time when we were between the Turtles 2 and uh, the dinosaurs. I have found two of them, brand new, unworn, that I'm making available for Derek for whatever he would like to do with them. That is awesome. All right, so Mich Michelin, thank you for that. So now the fans are going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, how do I get one, how do I get one? Well, we have one of the, one of the ways you didn't even know you were gonna get it, and I'm gonna tell you what it was right now. We actually took everyone who purchased a ticket for today's event, threw their names into a hat. We did all this before we started today, and we picked a winner. And this winner is going to get one of those hats. Michelin is going to autograph it for you, and then we're going to ship it out to you. So the winner is Michelle Ivy is going to be our winner for that today. So Michelle, congratulations to you for that. If Michelle, if you didn't order an autograph, You'll need to make sure that you contact the in-house contact page and we're going to need your mailing address and all that. I'll sort it all out with you later. Now, the, the second one, we are going to give away towards the end of the event today and I'm not going to say how we're doing it just yet, but everyone watching will have a shot to win the second hat, but it's towards the end of the day. So Michelin, thank you so much for that. I'm gonna ask Tyler to bring all of our guests back on live now, and we will do another question. While we're getting everyone to come on, Michelin, did you guys actually eat pizza on set? Uh, not on set, because we couldn't eat in the suits, but we did have a hell of a lot of pizza outside of the suits. No, we had pizza every day. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm sorry, we had pizza everywhere. There was pizza in the sewer, there was pizza in April's apartment, there was pizza everywhere, everywhere. We drank pizza. We had, we had pizza. I was mainlining pizza. I just couldn't get enough. <laughs> so here, I'm going to, oh, well, this is interesting. The person who just won, Michelle Ivy, she actually had a question and, uh -huh. Part of her question, Michelin has already shared with us, do you guys have any props? So Michelle, Michelin just showed you one of his props, but I do believe one of our other guests has a prop to show and tell as well. So why don't we do that and finish Michelle's uh, question? And I believe that would be Nick. Nick. What have you got, Nick? Nick, your audio is <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, I got you, I'm right here. Okay, yes, so I got the combat cold cuts. <laughs> nice. So we got up on the, on the deli in the, in the mall. Uh, the combat sausages. <laughs> this is them right here. And when I, and then I get hungry, I, I'm covered there too, so. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Where, yeah, remember these, Mish? I certainly do. <laughs> yes. What are those made out of, Nick? Well, it's got to be some type of a rubber. Uh, I think inside the internal part, they had a little uh, dowel, like a stick, and then they just covered it around with rubber. This is all rubber, so make it look like a sausage. Nice. Yeah. And then, so we didn't, we weren't, I guess, uh, I guess from the first movie, they used their weapons. I believe, Mish, and you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I guess they, they received a lot of letters from the first movie from parents about the weaponry and stuff like that. That was very, you know. Yeah, that was, that was the reason why we couldn't use our actual weapons in the second movie. And in fact, in the second movie, because uh, in England, they were actually illegal. They couldn't even oh. be seen. So that's why I had holsters for the nunchucks in the second oh. movie. And when it came time 
in that, that first scene that when I came up with the combat cold cuts as a substitute for not being able to use the nunchucks. Did I, you, you came up with that? That's great, great. It, it makes yeah, total sense. Uh, yeah, Michael and I came up with that on set. That's it makes, great. It makes total sense. I remember when I was, when I saw the film, I was a teenager, but I had a younger cousin who was, I don't know, five or six or something. And he had just seen the movie and I came over to visit and he's like, Derek, 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 I just saw Ninja Turtles and I'm a Ninja Turtle now. And he kicked me full hard in my leg without any like stepping back. And I, oh my God, it hurts so bad. And I'm like, this is, this is all pretend. It's supposed to be pretend. Hey, kids yeah. don't want to get it. So <laughs> I got a real quick oh. other one. Real, I got the yes, yo-yo as well. Please. Oh, he's got the, uh, <laughs> nice. the yo-yo around the world. Um, got the yo-yo. I have this. Uh, this is the original script. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's the original script. Is that um, and there's a note from Steve Barron in it. And it oh, says, cool. Dear Leaf, babe, <laughs> here's the script. Hope you enjoy it. See you in Wilmington's. Um, wow, that's cool. And then we got this as a gift. It's this full script with all the storyboards. Oh, wow. Uh, so there you go. Original. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I, I kept a few hundred thousand dollars. That's great. Well, I, I kept yeah. my, I kept. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just mortgage is a house. Get ready to mortgage that. I kept my <laughs> script too. Now, Pat <laughs> Donaldson gave us this. Nice. Hey, so Derek. Donate yeah. to charity if anyone has like a good charity. Oh, I wanted I wanted to chime in since we're talking scripts, and I'm gonna give exclusives. This is the TMNT 30th movie anniversary. I wish I had the actual script here with me. I don't, but I'm gonna share first a photo. Hope you all can see it with no glare. This. Um, is the uh, original uh, label with Vanilla Ice, yeah. my label mates, Technotronic, and uh, ourselves, Partners in Crime, and Key Master Snow. So something that's cool Very about cool. that, speaking of scripts that Leaf um, pointed out is, I, I'm, when I find it and dig it out at our next get together, I'll, I'll find it. There is a TMNT script for the second movie that had myself, and Keymaster Snow in there instead of Vanilla Ice. Now, oh, no. I guess that I guess that's going to be worth a ton of money. So you know, I'm going to find and pull that out. But wow, honestly, yeah. the, the 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 super and, and again, uh, I don't even have any uh, any kind of ill will towards Ice at all. Uh, we've met and, and hung out recently at some of the live shows, and he's he's come such a long way with his show. You go see him live; it's such fun. And uh, in the future, we're also maybe talking about something fun together that could happen. We'll talk about it. But the, just the thing about the industry was we had a script that had us slated after the first because of the success of the movie. But obviously, his song was so hot that when it came out and he got signed to us that they were like, this would be a great opportunity to throw Vanilla Ice in. So um, when I find that script, I'll show it to you. But that's an exclusive just for this con. I don't think I even too much know, told anybody that. So that's for you guys. It's pretty cool. That's fan. That's awesome. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and yeah. Richard, since you're here chatting about this, uh, we have a question from someone logged in as Galaxy, and they want to know okay. how you feel being. Again, I, wait. I got to put my glasses on. Sorry. How okay, do you feel ahead. being the establishing artist to cement the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles legacy into the hip hop culture? Wow, love that. Uh, I thank you so much for that, Galaxy. Um, so two things, well, a couple of things, and I hadn't even realized, there were some articles that were written about um, Turtle Power by some writers over the past years. And something they said that I had to look at, it was like, wow, that's an that's interesting insight and wonderful for me to hear about it because I hadn't thought about it. The writers were saying that, I don't know if people know this, but as much as some people want to joke about the Turtle Power record and how it's related to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they wrote and said this, what you don't understand about that record was when it came out in 1990, there were only a few people that, unless you were a diehard rap fan, um, you would have known of some rap artists, but it just hadn't exploded in a pop culture way quite yet. And, and they attest that I helped bring some authentic rap exposing to an audience that had, would, maybe would not have listened to it on their own, 
or had been exposed to it. So, and, and every time I meet an adult now who says that, you don't understand, when I was 10 years old, that wreckage you had, I told my parents, I want that for myself. Or they saved up their allowance, like, this is the record I want for myself. And the wonderful beauty of meeting fans that truly love Turtle Power and everything about it because of the fandom and the love for the Turtles was that they're like, I know every single lyric. You don't understand. Your song was the first one I knew all the lyrics to. I have fans now that know all the lyrics more than I do, which I love and, and I take as an honor. Um, recently, and you all may have read about it, Lin-Manuel Miranda, the, the author of Hamilton and In the Heights and Moana for Disney, amazing artist and, and lyricist and composer, he shouted the song out at the Oscars. He shouted Turtle Power out at the Oscars. And again, on TV with Live with Kelly and Ryan, and he's also shouted the lyrics out. And when he talked about it on Live with Kelly and Ryan, he said this, Derek, he said, they asked him a question, what do you think about the impact of music on kids and, and how it helps them to learn and do things? He said, let me tell you something. There's a song that came out about the Ninja Turtles in the movie, and it ran down the plot line to the script. He said, I know that song to this day. He said, that's what I think about how powerful music can be when it comes to learning for kids. So I just took that as a, just a wonderful blessing um, for someone to give that acknowledgement to him. I, I, to me, I love him. Uh, I'm hoping we're gonna collab or do something in the future. Uh, we're looking into that. He's an awesome guy. But, but that's how I, I feel about it. It's a wonderful honor to be a, a musical ambassador for the Ninja Turtles, for them to 30 years later from the first movie to be going so strong. And, and to be here with these talented guys, actors and stuntmen. Uh, Nick Palmer I've hung out with, amazing martial artist in person, by the way. Uh, a little bit of what you saw there, but he's amazing. Mish, Leaf, all these guys, they're great. Um, I'm so proud to be of that fandom. So proud to have been part of that music. And look out for us this year. I still have some more music that I may be bringing out. There's some artists I'm gonna be producing still. Um, and maybe a podcast too, or something other stuff uh, that may be doing. So keep a lookout for all of that, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Good luck with that. That's that's amazing. Thank you. That's, Thank I, you. I wish you all the best. So Thank now I, I'm going to switch over to Nick. Nick, we have someone whose screen name is Toka Oruku. Ah, and, yeah. And he wants you to share important information regarding raising funds for stunt actor Tommy D. And I'm just gonna let everyone know right now that my tech guy, Tyler, in the chat room is about, while Nick is discussing this, Nick is going, Tyler is going to place a link that you can either copy and paste, or hopefully it's a hyperlink that you can type on, but maybe you should copy and paste it for later so you can look at it when the show is done. But, uh, Tyler is going to put a link out there for everyone so that you can, learn more about what Nick is about to describe. But Nick, can you please tell us about this, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, uh, uh, Tom DeWeer, um, and of course, um, um, you know, Leif, we all know him, Leif, uh, Mish. Uh, Tom DeWeer was, was the turtle, the guy who did it, the stunts, the heavy duty stunts for all the turtles and Shredder. Like, I believe he did uh, the high fall from uh, the first movie. Again, Leif and Mish can tell, tell me if that's, you know, he did the high fall for, uh, Shredder off the off the building into the dumpster, uh, and then he did it. And he, got, he also he also did the ram too. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then on the second movie, he did it for Mikey, the the air ram over the over the car onto the uh, lid of the sewer, and he did the ratchet for Donatello, and he did also Raphael's uh, ram, air ram as well, going getting into the door of the disco. So anyway, he's got some health issues right now. He's battling cancer. And uh, yeah, and so um, and so um, they're trying to raise some money, um, you know, for for his uh, you know for his medicine basically. And so uh, they had they let's help Tommy D. Uh, Kurt Bryan is the host of it, and uh, it's organized by Kurt Bryan, and it's on GoFundMe.com. And if we could all you know pitch in to help him, it'd be great. I mean. He's the one that nobody talks about. You talk about teamwork. I mean, he, uh, like I said, he did all the heavy duty stunts for all the us turtles and Shredder, and he's an amazing guy, individual stuntman, filmmaker, uh, Tommy DeWeer. 
And so uh, let's help them out, you guys. Thank you for sharing that, Nick. So yeah. guys, my tech guy, Tyler, tells me that he has now posted the hyperlink in the chat room. If you guys can copy and paste that to check it out later, you know, donate if you can. There's no pressure, but certainly we want to support yeah. if we can. So thanks, yeah. guys. That's wonderful. Yeah. So yeah, sure. next, let's take a question for Mish and Nick. Uh, sorry, Mish and Leaf. This is from Scott. Scott wants to know, can you describe the rehearsal process to get in sync with the animatronic puppeteers? And, well, they talked about, they, they, Scott is also mentioning the chemistry that between the two of you as actors, which you've already touched on, so that's great. But yeah, talk about working with the puppeteers. Yeah, uh, as, as, as far as that is concerned, that was really one of the most mysterious and magical elements of this whole experience. Uh, uh, we had all had experiences to varying degrees of collaboration in different parts of our lives and our performances and our careers up to that point. Nothing, nothing up to that point, at least in my experience, compared with what was required in this relationship. It came to the point where, uh, as far as the nuts and bolts, we had time to rehearse with our puppeteers separate uh, it wasn't a lot, but we used every ounce of it that we could. And any time that we were rehearsing, either before going on set or on set, the puppeteer was always there rehearsing as well. And then we would, just, because we had communications with them, we would discuss how we wanted to change things, if we wanted to improve something or, or alter a line here, or what, change a move, whatever. That's how we developed it. But what was happening all the while, underneath all of the nuts and bolts, was a mystical connection that allowed us to breathe and think and speak as one, even though our voices might have been saying different things at the moment, the intention and the emotion and the basis behind was one unit. Uh, I've never experienced anything like that and I've done puppeteering for 30 years since and you always look for that. You look for that connection and build it to whatever level you can. But that experience with Mac Wilson, in my case, was something that I've never been able to repeat since and I cherish to this moment. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I can improve on what Misha just said. You know, it, 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 um, David Rudman, and I realized very quickly that um, if we're gonna have a connection and be in sync, it's gonna have to be, I like the word that Misha said, mystical. Like we, we're gonna have to find this sweet spot that happens without words and without um and we would like we we on our break we'd like play basketball together we would take breaks and we said let's play basketball you know and there's something about learning how to play with someone on the basketball court or any sport where you kind of have to you know you kind of have to um you learn about the other person you know, in the, phys in the physical sense, you know, you, you get their tendencies and you connect and you, you kind of, you, you, you sort of get this sort of where you, this, this, uh, it's hard to explain this kind of, um, sixth sense of where they're going to move. You, you get their behavior, you start understanding how they, how they play the game. Right. And we kind of uh, and try to apply that to this sort of process, you know, because we both were athletes and, you know, played a lot of organized sports. And that's where we kind of connected. Dave and I kind of connected in the locker room in a way, you know, and we, you know, we, I put the head on and we have these earphones. And I, and I remember the whole thing where we, and we just start getting in each other's heads. He would be talking, I'd be talking. And, and it, it's, it's like, um, you know, it's like two kids with walkie talkies and our own fort, you know, and, um, and you just kind of, 
you just eventually you just sort of are in the moment with the, it's hard to explain it, it's Misha had a better answer than I could ever, you know, but eventually you get to this point where you don't have to say anything to each other, you know, besides blocking and, you know, like where you're looking, you just sort of become, he's listening. I'm listening to him. Uh, I have to listen to his breath. He listens to my breath and we, we just kind of start breathing together and he's kind of inside my movement and I'm sort of inside his take on the words. And it just becomes this osmosis, you know, um, uh, it, it was a, a very, it was one of the things that kind of turned me on about the process, you know, was that connection. Well, with with everybody that's worked on the movie and all these moving parts, it's it's incredible the project that you guys came out with in the end. And I thank all of you for your hard work, and I'm sure the fans do too. So let's let's oh, let's do something we haven't done yet. And wow, we're already an hour and a half into the show. So we have polls that we've created for everyone. This is for all the viewing fans out there, and our guests can play along as well. Polls just are something fun for us to do here at In-House Con. So I'm going to have Tyler, my tech guy, throw up the first poll. Everyone play along. Which Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle film villain is your favorite? Toka and Razar, I needed my glasses, Tatsu, the Shredder, or the Foot Soldiers. So everyone choose your answer and hit submit. And when we are ready, we will bring up the answer. So uh, Richard... One of the fans, I believe his name was, here it is, yes. Jason, and, and I don't know if this is even possible. Jason wants to know where we can all get a 30th anniversary shirt. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, first, can I give a quick shout out? You have Michelle Ivey who won a prize. Yes. And uh, Michelle Ivey is, I know Michelle, I know Toka. What's up, you guys? Michelle is like single-handedly one of the biggest Ninja Turtle fans there is. She runs Cowabunga Corner. Uh, so it's just nice that she's actually won as well, but she's, uh, she just loves everything TMNT and she's so loyal and uh, a wonderful person. So I just wanted to shout that out. Um, I got my 30th anniversary shirt from a company called T-Navi, T-E-E-N-A-V-I. But I, I don't know if they still have them, but that's, uh, I'm giving that plug. They didn't give me money for it, but I'm, I'm plugging them anyway. <laughs> yes, it's a cool shirt. It's a cool shirt. Yeah, e even Judith, even Judith, April, she was like, wait, what? And her and Elias were like, wait, what? <laughs> Is that a shirt with my signature on it? I was like, okay, it wasn't me, guys. You have to take it up with them. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's cool. So we have a question from Dwayne. Did you guys study martial arts prior to the role? And, and if so, I don't know what that means. If not, what inspired you afterwards to take up martial arts? Nick or Leaf or Mish? I mean, Nick, Mish and Leaf, you guys had to do some, I would assume, choreographed uh, moves before. Yeah, I, I, think, man, but did I, you think Leaf is, I think Leaf is frozen. At least he looks frozen. On, oh, there he is. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, they gave us, I don't know if Leaf had had previous, but I had not. I had had stage fighting uh, as, as formal training uh, prior to it. But once we were cast, at least the three of us in New York, Leaf and Josh and myself, they gave us three, mo three months instructions with a sensei in New York who trained us as in our individual weapons as well in general martial arts movement. And then we continued our training all the way through the first film. And then we had a break. And then when we came back to the second film, we continued it again. Yeah, I, I, did, I, um, I didn't have any prior uh, martial arts experience. I had a lot of acrobatics and gymnastics and um, I wanted to be a, uh, an Olympic high jumper when I was a kid. And then I stopped growing when I was 12. And I, I literally, there was a moment where I was like weeping on this homemade high jump pit that I had when I was 12, because I just stopped growing, you know, like when your, your, your dad marks your right at the doorway to see you grow. And, and I was like practice. I was an amazing high jumper, by the way, at like 4'10". 
I was, I, I, I had some serious hops and um, Fosbury flop. I was like beautiful in the air, you know? And then I just stopped growing, right? And then I was, I was, I was like really depressed, but that was my physical. I played some hockey and hot soccer. And, um, anyway, so they set up a, this sensei, right? In New York, um, that was in the East Village, right? Which was really weird because this was my home, the East Village. I went to NYU. I studied experimental theater. You know, I was super bohemian kind of guy walking the streets, you know, um, at dawn. And, you know, and, and the East Village to me was like something completely different to me. You know, it was, you know, these, these CD bars, you know, mixed with like art galleries and coffee shops. And, and then suddenly there, I, I didn't even know there was like this martial arts studio amongst all of this, you know. And this guy, what was his name? Bob? Misha? What was that guy? David, I think. What was I the think it was his name? No, you're right. It was Bob. It was Bob. And yeah. he and he had this ponytail. He was like a hippie martial arts instructor. And uh, like seriously, you know, I had this big ponytail and it was kind of cool, you know. And and um, uh, and we were thrown into it, you know, the three of us. And um, it was fun. It was intense. But I felt very because um, this wasn't my world and martial arts. Just because you're an athlete or you're physical or you're strong or you it is a whole other skill set. You know, it's it's you know, that's why I admire Nick. Like you 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 you, you it's gotta not everybody that takes to martial arts understands martial arts. And you can be you can learn the technique, you know, but it's just technique. It's it doesn't come from this you know, this, this, this talent that you, you, they, you know, some people, they just take to things, you know, like Nick does with this and as well as other things like the saxophone and, and stuff like that and, and cooking. Um, uh, I did. Oh, that's it. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, great. <laughs> the, re the results to our first poll are ready. So let's bring those up and then we're going to do another poll. So the winner is the shredder. Obviously, right. the shredder. Well, hey, you never know. Let's bring up another poll, Tyler. Let's take another one. Do 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 again. All the guests and all the fans can play. How can it not be the shredder? How can you vote for someone else besides? I don't understand. Well, that. you never know. What is your favorite classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film? The first, the second, or the third? And everyone can submit. I'll just let you know, we can't see what everybody answers, by the way. So we don't know. It's all a secret. So don't fear that, you know, something's going to... I chose the third, by the way. You what? I chose the third one. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, it was me who chose Tatsu because I just did. I like Tatsu. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. Whatever. <laughs> all right. Let's see the uh, results there, Tyler, to that one. And then... Oh, of course. It's the first one, of course. Excellent. Good, uh, good, number good. three was amazing. Number three was a classic. Did you see that? Number three was incredible. <laughs> it was like they shot it in Oregon. There were a lot of trees. Uh, the, Ninja Ninja Turtles, like, the Ninja Turtles, like, did you see the costumes and that? They like they look like they had acne. Was, I was actually in that one. Oh, you were. I'm oh, sorry, man. <laughs> I know him too, but I was there. I wasn't contracting for Mikey, though. You didn't do Mikey? No, Shashir and Akola did. Ah. Uh, I, I, apparently, they were going to do it up in Canada. 70% had to be Canadian. Missed the boat. Uh, and plus, I was injured, too, from the second movie. But, uh, but anyway, Pat brought me up to work. Uh, so I was on the battlefield as a soldier. But there was well, they go back guy. in time, right? They go back in time. Yeah, I mean, it was a good story. I enjoyed being up in Oregon, and I really had a good time. Uh, yeah, all effects, though, did the uh, costuming, and, uh, you know, obviously, uh, it didn't have the Jim, Jim Henson standard. Yeah, the movies ever, the third one. No, but, uh, but you know, but looking at it now, it's a you know, classic. But anyway, I did get in the Donnie suit just one for one scene, because they were using Steven on a, you know, first, you know, was using him. On a, on a, yeah, I know, they were using them on, on a set, 
and they needed somebody in on second unit and Donnie. So they threw me in it just for one scene only. But I bet, that, I bet you were gen I'm genius. I bet you were brilliant. Yeah, I know. It was kind of, I was lost being Donnie, but it was fun at the same time. I so tried. you're 60? I, I know. I just was looking at it. Yeah, I am 60. I am 60. I know. But uh, I mean, like you said, um, uh, yeah, so we were talking about martial arts, my background, right? We, yes, we can continue talking about that if you desire. Well, really, Back yeah, really quickly. This is my background. I mean, I was with that guy, that guy who probably had attention deficit. I always thought I wanted to be, and I did, I wanted to be like Bruce Lee. So I was taking anything and everything I could to be like Mr. Versatility, Bruce Lee. So I took Choi Lei Foot, as I mentioned, for seven years on off relationship with my Sifu though. Uh, but at the same time, I was taking wrestling, I was boxing, I took gymnastics, I, re I fenced and stuff like that. I won some golden gloves in boxing, San Francisco golden gloves. Um, in the 80s, 82, I went into the army, I was stationed in Korea, did some boxing there, ended up taking Taekwondo there. And by the way, Choi Le Foot was mainly developed a lot of, a lot of strong horse stances. Uh, the kicks that they did when they threw them were, were, were low kicks. There were lower kicks and waist high kicks. They weren't like Taekwondo, which are, you know, that's all they're known for. Taekwondo is all kicking and stuff like that. And, um, and so I was able to take up Taekwondo there and that really enhanced my kicking ability. Um, and, um, and I went to Kuki Wong in Seoul, Korea to test for my black belt there. Upon leaving the army, I got back into Kung Fu, Choi Lee Foot and Wing Chun. And then, uh, when I moved to LA, I got the job and, uh, and I started to get involved with Bruce Lee's teachings with, through the Bruce Lee Foundation and so forth. So I kind of went backwards. I accumulated all this stuff. Now I'm chiseling all the way. And now I got nothing left. Not Weren't you on the moon? Tell us about yeah. that. What was that? When you walked on the moon. Tell us about that. Uh, no, that was the, the dark side of the moon. And you didn't <laughs> see me because it was on the other side of the moon. But, <laughs> but anyway, I'm here now. Yeah. Okay. So let me, guys, I need to interject because <laughs> I'm trying to plan <laughs> something here. I, this is why I love doing these live panels because you never know how they're going to take. And Leaf and Nisha have to tell you how much I miss hanging out with you guys because when we do conventions, the three of us have the perfect personalities and are just fuck you all the time and I love it. But with all that said, I have a surprise. And we make store, out. We make I have out. a surprise in store for our fans. Uh, as uh, we don't do this very often because it's it's it, well it's impossible sometimes with scheduling but we have another in-house con exclusive and the fans and and guys the guests don't know that i'm doing this either and i hope that they don't get pissed off because we're kind of colliding two worlds together but we have a special guest who's joining us today and i would like to bring him on right now he's actually in the newer Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle films, Mr. Jeremy Howard, who portrays Donatello. So if we could pull him in, Tyler, and introduce him to everybody, I would love it. Maybe. Uh-huh. He's coming. I know he's there. He's been texting me back and forth. Come on, Tyler. This is, this is really not cool, man. Oh, come on now, Leaf. Be nice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You better be. Well, I don't know what's happening. Okay, I'm being texted that something is wrong. For the love of God, really? Okay, while we're fixing that, and the ruined, there he is, Jeremy. There you are. We can't hear you. Turn your mic on. I'm yeah, here. I'm here. here. <laughs> Hi, Jeremy. Oh my gosh! Hey guys, how you doing? What's happened? Good. How are you? <laughs> good. Good. Was the last wow, time was I saw a... you. Was that was a process. Good. That was a process there, but uh, I guess all's well that ends well, right? Well, I'm, sure. glad, I'm glad that you're here, and I'm going to put Leaf on the spot now because of his wise-ass remark. So um, I'm pulling up images here of both Donatello's side by side. Oh, Tyler, get rid of our video on the right, please, so everybody has a clear shot. Just leave our mics live. So while we're doing that, Jeremy, share with us how you got your role in the newer films really quick. I mean, it was not, 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 not much excitement there. I literally went in and auditioned for the casting director as if it was any normal audition for a TV or movie. Um, and I got a call back and met with the director. And then three weeks later, I did a chemistry test with uh, 
10 other guys and then they just narrowed it down to four and that was it. And congratulations. You Thank you. <laughs> and so now I want to pick on Leaf. <laughs> so Leaf, I've got two shots here up on the, on the screen. Yeah, can, you break, can you break down the similarities that you are aware of that were incorporated from your character in the 90s to the new character? But is this a, is this a test? Yes. I told you I was going to pick on you. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. The green. Um, what are the similarities? Um, uh, Pressure. Maybe, yeah, maybe both, some of the fans are, can chime both in and are help. A different take. You know, they're both, you know, they're both a different, um, uh, you know, take. I think the, 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 the one on the left that I'm inside is based on closely to you know, what Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird were coming up with. And the one on the right, you know, the latest ones is, um, you know, someone else's creative take on, you know, what they may look like. Um, I, I think that another celebrity, you know, they're, they're both, um, you know, I, I saw the, the latest ones, you know, Donatello, they, they both share this, kind of uh, nerdy sensitivity, um, you know, uh, and they like to kick ass and they like pizza and they like to be in the moment and they love themselves deeply. <laughs> that is a perfect answer. Thank you so much, Leaf. <laughs> Wonderful. So, Jeremy, were you a, a Ninja Turtle fan before you got a role in the film? Oh my gosh, I lived and lived and breathed it when I was a uh, nine, 10, 11 year old, for sure. So you were greatly inspired then by Mr. Tilden's performance of the- Oh my gosh. Oh, when I, saw, when I saw that movie in 1990, uh, we went as a family. Um, I, I was blown away. I, I bought all the, the toys right away, all four turtles. And uh, I remember running around, uh, I think I had a purple mask. I got a broomstick and I ran around, at the time we were in an apartment complex, I just moved to uh, Minneapolis, and I remember running around the complex trying to avoid people and hiding under benches and things. I thought I was a Ninja Turtle. It was, that movie for me was um, a big deal in my childhood. I just remember it just took my imagination away. I just, I believed that world, I believed those guys, and uh, it, was a, it was a really, uh, if I had to look back in my life, there's only a few movies that really affected me, and that was that was one of them. And I think you probably lucked out. Well, lucked out may not be the way to say it, because, but we've heard some of the trials and tribulations that the guys went through in their costumes. You're you didn't have to wear a costume. You wore a suit in order for CGI to be placed on top of. So you were a little bit more free. Do you wish that you could have worn a full blown turtle costume? I mean. The, do I wish as an actor? No, I mean, if the, if the outcome was uh, as impactful as the 1990 film was because they wore suits and they didn't attempt to do CGI at that time, which would probably would have been you know, near impossible, but um, I guess it's all about what the end result is. So um, as an actor, no, I mean, personally, I've, pay, I've paid my dues in prosthetics and suits. Um, I don't wanna go back to that if I don't have to. Um, so I don't envy what those guys went through at all. I mean, it's, 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 it's hard. It's physically torturous at times. Well, we've learned a lot about that today with our guests. So I think we can attest to that for sure. So this is awesome. I'm so glad that you could join us today, Jeremy. So I know that the fans are cramming for how are they going to win one of Michelin's other hats. Jeremy, you don't know this, but Michelin's got uh, – cast and crew caps that we gave away. We gave away one earlier. Derek, Derek. Yeah. Oh, let me interrupt real quick, Derek. We have two hats to go still. Oh, well then two people will win. We only have one contest planned. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll pick two winners, but here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna prep everybody now so that you can get ready for it. We'll take our last couple of questions and then we'll come back to this, okay? So I, what I need all the viewing fans to do if you're not watching this on your iPhone or your Android, 
hopefully you're watching it on a separate device, an iPad, what have you. We are actually going to do, before the end of the day, a sing-along with Richard for the theme song to the movie. And what we're going to do, all of our panelists are going to sing along as well. I'm going to share my screen. We have all the words printed out for all of you guys to do. What I want everyone to do is to take their phones while they're singing along, and I want you to do a selfie of yourself singing along with the guys, and I want the video posted on social media, at Cool Waters Prods, and you can tag all the guys, and we are gonna look at every fan who sends in a sing-along selfie with the gang today, and two of, two of those people, apparently, are each going to win an autographed hat from Michelin Sisti. So you have to be ready for that. We're gonna do it in a minute. Leaf is practicing now. Before we get to that part, let's take this a question. This is so much fun, by the way. You okay, can I'm glad, I love it. So, I, let's see, we have a, a, a question from, if you guys, Scott, if you guys, the panelists, could play another Ninja Turtle character in the movie, who would it be? Why don't we start with Nick? I'd like One to stay with Mike. Mike. I'm going to stay with Mikey. You're going to stay with Mikey. Okay. Michelin, how about you? Lazy. <laughs> Only Michelangelo, 24-7, 365 days. Okay. Okay. Leaf, don't make it easy for them. Come on. Who would you be? No, man. I, I, I would love a stab at Raphael, man. You know. You know. Um... I relate to the anger, you know. <laughs> good, good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, walking, I, walking, I feel that, yeah. And, you know, it's like Jack Kerouac with a hammer, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I would, I, I definitely um, like, you know, kick some ass and like, you know, Bukowski at a bar, you know, drinking some bourbon, you know, and just like kind of mumbling like, fucking shred up. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Jeremy, how about you? That was for all the kids. <laughs> uh, I'd take a stab at Leonardo. All right, Leonardo. And Richard, finally. Yeah, I think uh, there's a little bit of a couple of the guys for me. Um, definitely some Leo for that calm, like, let's bring this group together, leader kind of mode. I have that. Um, I, that wrath comes out of me. Uh, sometime for sure. And then identify big with um, Donatello and the gadgets. So uh, a little bit of those guys. Oh man, Richard, you'd be, <laughs> you'd be a great April. Oh, stop ah, playing. Come stop on, playing. man. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah, let's see. Um, nice. We have another fan question. This is from Anise. Oh, that's my mom. My mom is watching. This question is for Nick. Mom, I your mom. Know what is behind you, Nick? She wants to know what's behind you. Well, I've got a couple of things. Uh, let's see, I got a lion head here that I, it's a, it's a southern Chinese lion head. You know, you usually, you have two people using that in the martial arts, you know, for, um, for the new year and so forth. I got Mikey's head that turned around. Also, I want to shout out to Mike, Michelle Ivy. Hope her dad feels better, and I'd like to say hello to her, but also Toka. And uh, his fans and friends and stuff. They sent me this, by the way. Over here, I got a Jim Henson hand. So this is the actual hand from Jim Henson. They sent me several of them to get used to uh, working the nunchucks with once I got the job. And I just lift, lift so it up a little bit, Nick. This there one, actually, this one actually uh, survived. So I put it in a case after cleaning it out a little bit. Uh, last but not least, I told you I got I had the script also from uh, Pat Johnson and Barbara Goldstone when we got on the set, Turtles 2. Finally, I also have a storyboard. I don't know how I got this one, but it, this is a storyboard from the whole movie too. Pat they gave it to us as well when we were there. So kind of a nice thing. Lots this is not the original though. Lots of nice memories, lots of nice memories. Okay, guys, so I think we're gonna do our sing-along now. So uh, what we're gonna do, 
what we're going to do is Richard is going to play the music in his audio video. Tyler's going to leave all of our guests yes. live. You're going to, I'm going to hide my video and we're going to have everyone sing along. So I need all the fans out there, get your phones and yep. you don't have to do it always with the computer in the background. If you want to bring it and see yourself as you're reading the words, that's fine, but get a shot. Yep of the computer in the background so that other knows in line we see it. And yep. Richard, wait for my cue because I got to bring up the lyrics here and we're going to have no everybody worries. sing along. No worries, I'm just scratching a little bit. Okay, let me do my screen share. <laughs> All right, and I'll scroll as we go. Okay, is everybody ready? Yes. Richard, are you it. ready? Yeah, and uh, I want to say too, like you were saying to everyone, use your cameras. Um, and if you want to videotape yourself rapping with it, or even if later you want to video, videotape yourself rapping with the song, you can send an email to partnersincrime at gmail.com. You know how to spell crime, K-R-Y-M-E, partnersincrime at gmail.com. And I'll also take the videos and we'll help compile those as well. All right, are we ready, gang? We can do that. We can do that. Just make sure in order to win the hats, though, they have to post it on social media. So I'll social have media. Tyler. Yep. I will have yep. Tyler send out our, our links in one second. So here yep. we go. All right. Stand by, you guys. Are we really singing? Yes. Oh, yeah. Turtle power. I'm doing it for the heroes for in this day and age who could ask for more crime wave is crime wave is fighting is mysterious all police and detectives are furious find source of this lethal evil force this is serious. So give me a quarter. I was a witness. I've Get me a reporter. Call April O'Neill. In this case, you better hurry up. There's no time to waste. We need help. We need help. Right. We need help. Right. We need help. 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 We need T-U-R-T-U-R-T-L-E power. T-U-R-T-L-E-Power. Determined to put these crooks in jail. She spied the bad guys and saw what happened, but before she knew it, she fell in the trap and got caught. Yeah, she yeah, was all she alone, all alone with, no friends, with no friends and no, and no phone. phone. And this was beyond and this her worst dream. She was caught in by was some way with some way. Headed by Shredder. Headed by Shredder. Well, Shredder but good. This guy that I love, they, they call him the foot. To the rise of being angry, you said. He was a beast of the movie, crew. They're from out of the shack. They went off from Zach. He's out of California. Brown, from the field of weeds, the heroes were skewed to town because they possessed turtle power. T U R T L E E power power teenage mutant ninja turtle T U R T L E power 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 T U R T L E it's a great message. All right, y'all, give a round of applause. Okay. Round of applause. Y'all going to give us two verses. That's what's up. That's what's I wish up. you would have sent me this. You guys, you guys rock the half show, okay? You guys did. Thank you. That was fun. That was, <laughs> that was good. Great. So, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. So my tech guy, Tyler, in the chat room is going to post our social media, ha um, not a hashtag, our handle. Our handle is yes. at Coolwaters Prods. And we are on every platform the same handle, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Yes. So it doesn't matter what platform you put it on, guys. Just get your selfies up there of you singing along with the gang. And then we're going to give away yes. two of those hats from Michelin. So that's fantastic. So that's we're awesome. coming to the end of our day today. And I'm going to do my little spiel that I always do at the end before we go. So first all right. of all, I, I want to thank all of our guests for being here. I greatly appreciate it. I also want to thank all the fans who, who paid to be part of this event. For those of you who don't know, Cool Waters Productions is a small family-run business. 
small and family run, small business. We are the backbone of America. And we have been completely cut off from the backbone of America because we are not going to conventions right now making any money. So whatever little bit that everyone has contributed to today, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting small businesses like mine. And I appreciate you also supporting my clients and watching their films and their television programs. And if you bought autographs before the show today, I thank you for that as well. And if you didn't get a chance to buy an autograph or after listening to our guys today, you were like, oh my God, I should have bought one. No problem. You all have a chance to still purchase autographs from all of our guests, including our surprise guest, Jeremy Howard. And Tyler, my tech guy, is going to post the link in the chat room where you can go to buy those autographs. It's coolwatersproductions.com and you click on the store and search for in-house. But he's gonna put the direct link in there. You guys can all go buy them. We're gonna leave all of the autographs up and available until Monday. And then I have to remind everybody, once the autographs are purchased, we have to mail all of the items out to the guys they have to sign it and mail it back to us, and then we mail it to you, the fans. So this process could take up to 30 days. Don't or years. On, or years. Don't contact me on Friday going, where is my autograph? Okay, I need to thank again, once again, I want to thank uh, Talking Bay 94, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Forever, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan page, as well as all the fans that chimed in today. I have to thank my tech guy, Tyler. Without him helping me behind the scenes, this wouldn't be happening as well as my webmaster, Sarah, I really appreciate it. And our new sponsor, which is Universe, which some of you now know if you joined nice. us last month, Universe is where we sell our tickets now. And so I have to thank them as well. So I'm gonna ask each of our guests to say their goodbyes. And then I'm gonna tell everybody, when everybody's done saying goodbye, please leave your screens on. We have 18 seconds of credits. So this is not a movie theater. You're not a get, get up and walk out for 18 seconds. So everyone watch. So Jeremy, let's start with your goodbyes, please. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't here for more time. Got to, uh, you know, be able to share more stories or anything like that. But uh, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Good luck to you. Take care. Richard, how about you? Oh, yeah. Um, Hey guys, I wanted to say, and Derek, there's one quick question I got to answer that I get all the time. Can I take a second to do that? Yes, you can, sir. Here's the last one. Everybody wants to know from the song, uh, who's the leader of the group and how did Raphael get named that? I'm going to answer really quickly. Um, when they ran the plot points down to us, they gave us what, who obviously, um, I, I got the plot points of the film, who dominated the film, the first film, so much in the story plot, it was Raphael. So with the notes that they gave us before the film was released, Raphael seemed to dominate the most, which it makes sense from that film. And he was the perceived leader on screen from the movie. So that's how it got to be that, guys. But we all know that Leo, my man Leo, is the leader of the group. Thank you, everybody. Thank to all the TMNT fans. We couldn't have done it without you. You guys are the best. Stay strong. Be the true heroes that you are. And we love you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Richard. Take care. Nick, how about you? Thank you, all guys, all teenage community guys out there for being here today. And it was really appreciated. And it was great to be on this panel, especially with Mish and Lee and Richard and Jeremy. And yes, you too, Derek. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate it. Take care now. Thank you. All right. My, my last two friends, Leaf and Mish, who wants to go first? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to add one little tiny thing because he's gone away already. I wanted to thank Jeremy for b being part of what's keeping the franchise going. And of course, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you guys out there. You have made it possible for us to enjoy this wonderful magic for three decades now. And my, oh my, how privileged and yeah, it's been really cool. Thanks. Thanks. Take care, Mish. Mr. Tilden, you have the floor. Well, I, I you know, I, I want to say, um, you know, it's great that people um, dig the Ninja Turtles. I, I, I think that's a very cool thing. I do, you know. Um, 
when I first got the role, I was living in the Lower East Side, Chinatown, and, and above my loft where I was living at the time, right below the building was a underground comic book store. Uh, very cool, you know. Um, and I read this black and white version of the Ninja Turtles when they all had red bandanas and they were vicious and um and all the guy all the all the cats that were working in this you know underground comic book store were just like this this is the next big thing this is so cool this is rad and it is and it is very cool and i thank you guys for you know uh digging what i dig you know um and uh there's nothing like ninja turtle fans and i mean that seriously you know you guys are Awesome, you know, so uh, cowabunga. Thanks, Leif. Appreciate it. All right, everybody, I'm going to share my screen for the credits. I thank you for hanging out with us today, and we'll see you next week, I hope. Bye bye now. <laughs>